What is up guys? In today's video, I'm going to give you a multi-camera look at my drawing technique, how I draw from the shoulder instead of from the wrist. Now this is something I've talked about numerous times before in my previous tutorials, but since I always film those from a top-down angle, really all you see is my wrist and my hand and you can't see what the rest of my arm is doing. I kind of explain it as I'm going along, but I wanted to give you a multi-camera look at what my technique actually consists of. So I've got one, two, three cameras set up for today's tutorial. So hopefully you'll be able to incorporate the same technique in your own work. For today's video, I'm using an iPad, but the same technique works no matter what you're using. So it can be traditional, it can be digital, it doesn't matter, it incorporates across the spectrum of media. So even if you've got a pencil and paper, you can still use the same technique in your own work. So I think the most common mistake new artists make when they're starting out is they want to draw from the wrist. And to be honest, it's kind of understandable because that's how we write. So once we start writing, it all comes here from the wrist. We make our letters, and then as we need to move over, we just move our arm as we go. But all of the motions come from the wrist, and that's how a lot of artists beginning out want to draw to, and there's limitations to this. So let's go ahead and clear this out here, and I'm going to switch over to a cartoon sketch pencil here. And you'll see as I start to draw these circles in here, I'm drawing just from my wrist right now. The limitations come when I start making bigger circles. You'll see I can't make as big of a circle and still maintain that same smoothness that I initially had. And then eventually I'm going to get to a point where I'm kind of stuck at this size. I can't go any bigger. That's one of the problems writing or drawing from the wrist is going to give you. Another one too is just wrist fatigue. A lot of people draw for a while and then they start to feel the pain and the discomfort in their wrist. And this technique I'm going to show you, drawing from the shoulder, is going to alleviate that and it's going to help you out a lot if you draw for long periods of time. So let's go ahead and clear this out now. And I'm going to move over here. Let's keep the same pencil, but instead now, instead of drawing with my wrist, I'm going to start to draw with my shoulder and you're going to see it's going to come clear down and incorporate down here into my wrist. So we'll start out with those small circles again and you can see it's my shoulder that's moving up here. So I'm doing these circles again, getting bigger as I go, but then as you see down here where I was really struggling to maintain that nice smooth circle, I can start to do even bigger circles. And then I'm just gonna overlap these. I can just get some absolutely huge circles right here. So you'll notice here too, looks a little bit sketchier, but it has more energy to it. It's more dynamic and it shows a lot more confidence in your strokes too. That's one thing I really see with drawing from your wrist and beginners. It almost looks a little too mechanical starting here, it looks a little bit too kind of second guessing to where a lot of artists, it kind of has a timid feel to it and you get these kind of, you know, squiggle lines here and you're trying so hard to make that perfect stroke that you're really just kind of in the moment of trying to get it perfect and you're kind of losing that fluid motion that you really want with your art. Doing stuff like this is going to show a lot more confidence in your strokes and it's going to make for better artwork. So let's go ahead and clear this out. As you can see here too, I'm using this huge thing here. This is the Sketchboard Pro. I love this thing just because I can actually come down here and still rest my arm and my wrist over here and I can still use my shoulder at the same time and you see how much extra room that I'm getting. If I had the iPad pulled out here and just had it on the table because the iPad sits up and it's higher than the table, I don't have that same flat surface to draw on. Of course, you don't have that problem if you're just using pencil and paper, but that's why this is so important. The other thing I've talked about in previous videos too is I love having the matte screen protector and the artist glove because of this whole drawing technique. So you see, it's not just one piece. It's not just drawing from the shoulder. It's all these other parts incorporated into it too, which just makes for really strong, bold, and like I said, expressive and confident lines. And that's what we're going for. 
Drawing from your shoulder is also going to allow you to get from one side of the canvas to the other without having to start and stop. That's why a lot of lines sometimes appear choppy if you're doing everything from the wrist because you have to kind of break up your stroke and come down and pull down, lift up. And it really, once again, makes for those shaky lines, which is what we're trying to get rid of. And that's why we're drawing from the shoulder. So you can just see how smooth this line is, the energy of the line, and then once again, that confidence of the line. Like I said, drawing from the wrist too, you're going to have some wrist pain after drawing for long periods of time. Drawing from the shoulder, I find alleviates that. And it doesn't replace the wrist pain here to the shoulder up here. Of course, unless you have a pre-existing shoulder condition, but because we're not actually rotating the full shoulder, we're just kind of moving it back and forth like this. It's not fully rotating. It doesn't give you the same pain that the wrist pain is going to give you. So I can really draw for a lot longer using this technique than what I would with my wrist. And if you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm a sucker for tapered lines. I have this brush set here, this cartooning brush set with the standard anchor that you see right here, which gives really strong tapers at the beginning beginning and the end of the line and you get those a lot better too if you draw from the shoulder so let's illustrate this once again just drawing from the wrist here basically the tapers result from you kind of applying a light pressure then a heavier than letting up and you see here I'm I'm getting a little bit of a taper but it's not really like you'll see in my videos and that's because I don't have as much control using my wrist over the pressure so instead let's go ahead and use the shoulder here and you'll see this gives me a much better control over my pressure you'll see these lines look extremely different now you get a huge difference in that taper once again here using my wrist I'm not getting the same taper here that I would using this technique with my shoulder. So I know I have comments that people have used this brush set before, they're not getting the same results. And this is usually why, because the pressure is not applied and let up like you need to, and they're usually drawing with the wrist instead of the shoulder. So this is another technique that's gonna help you out with inking. Now, do you always have to draw from your shoulder? No, sometimes I will draw just from my elbow too. So if you watch here, if I'm doing just some quick kind of tapered lines like this, you'll see that I'm moving my elbow, keeping my shoulder pretty much locked in, but I want that quick tapered line here at the end. So you'll see that my shoulder stays in place and my elbow is the part that's moving to do these. Now I say using your shoulder, using your elbow, do I ever use my wrist? Yes, of course I do, but that's when I want to dial in very small areas when I want to get a really sharp detail. So if I was doing these lines, but I wanted smaller ones, of course, I'm not going to be able to stop that line as quick using my entire arm to my elbow. So if I just do it with my wrist here, I can also get that same technique here just by doing a quick flick of the wrist. But like I said, I only do that when I want to have short, quick lines. When I want these larger lines that go and travel further across the canvas, that's when I'll use my elbow. Now, if I want those same lines to stretch from one side of the canvas to the other, that's where I'll use the shoulder. So that gives me the ability to go all the way across the screen or across the canvas, across the paper. And I'm going from my shoulder, clear down to the elbow, down to the wrist. And you can see how much control I have over these. These are actually pretty parallel to each other. There's not a lot of give and take with the gap. So you see the control comes from that. You also get the more dynamic flow from one side to the other. And once again, that very confident stroke that we're going for. So let's see how I use this in action, how it speeds up the sketch process. So I'm gonna switch over here to my cartoon sketch pencil and then switch my color here to blue. And just watch how I use my shoulder down to my elbow, down to my wrist. Number one, it speeds up the process quite a bit. And you can see just how fluid and quick the lines are and how quick the sketch builds up. Using the wrist, it would take a lot longer to kind of map out everything. So this is really a time saver when it comes to your sketch process and it just speeds up everything. Like I said, gives that more confident feel and more energy to your lines. So just look at how quick that whole design kind of came together, just super fast using that shoulder down to the elbow and down to the wrist. 
All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Hopefully you can incorporate this technique into your own work. Here's my advice to you though, as you start to use this and play around with it, don't overthink it. So as you're drawing, just let it flow. Don't sit there and think, okay, am I using my elbow right now? Am I using my shoulder? Which one am I using more? Do I need to add more of this to it or more of this? Just kind of let it flow. It just should come naturally. And that's the kind of technique that you want to go for. It's it should just be quick, it should be natural, and it should be fluid. So thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. As for me, I can be found online at bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell. Also, if you guys haven't joined yet, I've got a group over on Facebook called Keep Creating, a group for artists by artists. I'll link it down in the description below, a place where you can share your artwork, give feedback, get feedback. It's an awesome place to be. I want you guys to be a part of it too. So that's it for me for today. And until next time, keep creating.